Christ Jesus, you'll be lifted higher. Hey, welcome. Higher. Higher. I hope you're having a wonderful, wonderful evening. I'm so glad to be with you. Welcome. Join on and worship with me. Worship the Lord with me. Join this atmosphere. Hey, guys. Hey, Jada. Hey, Laura. Oh, Jesus has a powerful word for you tonight, okay? God wants me to tell you, stay on this line. Stay right here. Because he has something that he wants to share with you, okay? He does not want you to miss it. Jesus, you be lifted higher. Thank you, Jesus. Higher. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Higher. Jesus, you be lifted higher. Hey, Periscope, I see you. Higher. Higher. Jesus, you be lifted higher. Higher. Jesus, you be lifted higher. I prophesy in the name of Jesus. This is going to be your best week yet this year. This year, okay, your best week yet. God, I just saw. I just saw God tell me. I saw prophesying. God said, said "God said prophesy." Okay, so I prophesy in the name of Jesus. I speak it upon you right now. This will be your absolute best week all year. Is what the Holy Spirit is leading me to say right now. Okay, so get ready. Get ready. All right. So, Father God, in the name of Jesus, as we come together as a body who loves and serves you, Father God, I open up the atmosphere and I welcome you, okay? As you've already been here, but I welcome you, your presence even more, okay? As we sit here together and ponder and meditate and focus and feed on the word that you have left us on tonight, okay? Father God, in the name of Jesus, I give all glory to you. I exalt you above all names, including my own. As we worship you, Father, in all ways. Thank you so much for dropping us your spirit and dropping your presence upon us. We need you above all things, Father God. And we welcome you into our heart in the name of Jesus. Okay? All right. So we are ready. All right. Let's go ahead and get popping. First of all, you all notice that my hair is much different. <laughs> I decided to go bold this week and I dyed it blonde. And I'm absolutely loving it. So if you love it, go ahead. You can let me know. I um, absolutely appreciate it. I uh, got lots of likes on my Facebook page uh, because I like to engage you in my life process. And uh, so that was uh, a big, big move for me because I had been wanting to do that for a while. Um, another thing is God blessed me with a new car this week. Uh, glory to God. I was telling uh, my prophet and the ministry that I'm a part of, uh, JHM, <laughs> including my own, of course, Aaliyah Connect Ministry. Uh, you know, we were just rejoicing in that in the name of Jesus. Welcome. I see you. Thank you for those hearts. Okay. So God has transferred multiple levels of power to me. Okay. Um, not only the, the power to hear his voice and minister to you, but he has given me the power uh, to have an anointing to release financial deliverance. Um, an anointing to be able to follow his spirit and read the word and be able to deliver the exact word that he wants to say. Um, the power to get favor. Uh, the power, so much power. So much power. The queens of the spirits are with me, okay? Uh, the, the, the minister of finance is with me. My own angels that have been with me all my life are with me. It's like added glory. And God wants to do that with you, okay? So... I come to you with this word. As I was getting ready, God said, it's all about what's in your heart. Now, I didn't even know what God was going to be ministering to us on tonight, okay? But he said, he whispered in my spirit, it's all about what's in your heart. And I was uh, uh, I was conditioning my hair at that time. So I put my little cap on, my little plastic cap. You know, we got a, us curly hair girls, you know how, how dry our hair gets. <laughs> so... I put my little cap on, right? And um, I went to my kitchen area over here and um, started drying my hair. And so God said, go ahead and focus. Uh, just, I like details. So I don't have to like, 
diffuse my hair with my with my arms I now have a sit down dryer so now as I'm getting ready I can even be doing even more reading so I was, as I was getting ready my hands and my mind were free right because as you increase in your anointing God is wanna, gonna want to free up your time and tiny little things like that are very valuable to God so God is wanting me to pause and say he invites you to find ways to create efficiencies in your life so that he can have more access to your mind and to your hands okay so either way I didn't plan on saying that but um so I was sitting there and God had given me the direct message about how to get power and how it's all about what's in your heart okay so here's one of my most profound revelations of the evening I want to be giving you all the details that led up to this okay you're gonna to need to know everything the Holy Spirit is the power that was released by Jesus when he went off to heaven, okay? Now, the interesting thing about that is that, and this is like lightning for me, okay? And I hope it is for you. The Holy Spirit, based on scripture, is doubly multiple, has multiple anointings, anointings but he's in two places, okay? He's in your heart. Searching your heart is what the scripture says. And he also knows the will of the Father. So when you get the revelation that the Holy Spirit is in two very important places. Hey, Lucretia. Hey, Jocelyn. Hey, Lonnie. Oh, I love seeing you all. Two different places at once. And they are very, very critical for you to understand. That's how you're going to get your power. Because the Holy Spirit is packed with power. The Holy Spirit is the power, is the power of Jesus, okay? So when you have the Holy Spirit in your life and whether or not you welcome the Holy Spirit, he's still going to be monitoring our hearts, okay? It's just when your heart is in the will of God, the power is transferred to you, okay? Now, I am riled up about this because if you can, and you know I'm about roots. Our last broadcast was about getting the right roots in your heart, okay? God sows the root of his word in your heart by reading the word of God and by you listening to your woman or man of God, your prophet, because the prophet holds the word of God, okay? Now, that's how you get the root of God's word in your heart, and then when you get that rooted, that is a seed. That's the seed being rooted in your spirit, okay? Now, once the seed of God's word is in your heart through the scripture and your woman of God, and if you can discern the spirit of God, absolutely, then that seed is rooted and creates a harvest, okay? The enemy works on the same principle. Yes, Lucretia said, you better say that. The enemy works on the same principle. The enemy knows that God has a seed, right? And God's seed manifests as Jesus, okay? In addition to his word, yes, Nicole, amen, okay? The enemy will plant the seed of a lie in your heart. And then that will take root in your heart. And then it will be, it will birth satanic harvest. Okay? You're gonna see me uh um talking on that, okay? Because when you when we come together on these broadcasts, we are coming together as a church. Hi, hello, I see you on Periscope saying hello, welcome, welcome to our church, okay? Welcome to our divine atmosphere and our presence of angels. Okay, ministering to us in this very moment. This is live ministry. This is live angelic ministry. Okay, by the Holy Spirit. Okay, and all of the divine presences that are with us. So the enemy comes to get you the wrong route. And it's my job to deliver to you the word of the Father, the word of Jesus, the word of the Holy Spirit to get you the right route so that you can prosper. So that you can prosper because that's the harvest okay so god is leading us to grasp onto every word so that it can take root in our hearts so we may prosper okay so here's the word again and, and deeper into this the question is are you activating your helper in the holy spirit okay are you activating your helper because the holy spirit is multiple things, okay? The Holy Spirit is a comforter, a helper, a teacher, a guide, a protector, a prosperer, so many things. But are you activating it? And the way that you activate the Holy Spirit is by having a heart. Yes, his, the, yes, the laws are one. 
But the heart, Jesus told me on tonight, reminded me on tonight, it's all about the heart. Not just the laws. Because if we're, if we're people that just look at the laws and just say, okay, I'm just going to obey the law, that is more about what we're doing and not who we're being. Okay? The heart is the heart is the mind. Yes, the heart is the mind. Okay? God says go go into the words. Okay, so so watch this. In John chapter 16, verse 17, it says, But I tell you the truth, it is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper, which is the Holy Spirit, will not come to you. God says, pause on that. Look at what he says. If I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. And then he says, release. Okay. But if I go, I will send him. So Jesus sends you the Holy Spirit, which is your power. That's the power. It says Jesus' original resurrected body could not be at, at uh, more than one place at a time. So that's why he said, hey, hey, guys, this is a good deal. I know y'all love me. Y'all been ministering with me for this three years. He's talking to his disciples here. Okay. I know you guys are attached to me. But I got something better for you. <laughs> hey, many anyway, praise the Lord. As you can see, I'm on early. I'm going to be planning on coming on much earlier because I know many of you were sleeping. You were praising at like 2 o'clock in the morning for the past few weeks. <laughs> it was not stopping. The move, of, the move of the Holy Spirit was not stopping in the name of Jesus. Okay? So Jesus was saying, hey, guys, I'm going to send you the helper. That's going to be uh, the power that I'm going to transfer to you. But I, But I have to go. Because God was not omnipresent when he was in his body, even his resurrected body. He, he couldn't be more than one place at a time. But he said it's a better deal because if he sends the Holy Spirit, now you have his presence with you everywhere, 24-7, okay? So when I say, are you activating your helper in the Holy Spirit? It's really, are you understanding that he's in heaven with God and discerning the will of God? To God, to God be the glory. Yes, yes. And do you understand that he's monitoring your heart at, at all times? Are you working with him through that process and acknowledgement? Hallelujah, Manny Way. Hallelujah, Lucretia. Welcome, Monica. Okay? His spirit is available everywhere all the time with the ability Jesus' spirit through the Holy Spirit, okay, to teach you, to comfort you, to guide you, to prosper you, to protect you. This is his omnipresence. Now, when we talk about the Holy Spirit, yes, hallelujah. Yes, Monica, hey. When we tell, share this, guy, share this. People need to hear this word. You never know who God is sitting, telling me to say. You never know who's in a down place, a down place, and just needs a pick-me-up. The word of God is a pick-me-up. Okay, let's not be selfish on this. Let's get this word out. Share it on Twitter, Facebook, wherever you want. Follow the will of the Holy Spirit on that. Okay, but that's how we get the gospel out. We need to be sharing. Yes, they need to apply the word. That's right. Amen. Very true word of God. Amen. Now it says the Holy Spirit now, as we're looking at activating the Holy Spirit so that we can get the power of God, okay, through what's in our heart, the contents in our heart, Let's be reminded that the Holy Spirit is a person and has qualities just like us. So we're not talking to like, a, I don't want to say a dog, but you know, like dog man, best friend, that's the first thing that comes up. Like we're not talking about an entity that is different, very different from us. We're talking about a Holy Spirit that has a mind, like we think emotions. He can be sad and he can be grieved. He can be disappointed. He can rejoice. He can be satisfied. He can be proud. Okay? The Holy Spirit can be all of these things. We have a friend, a guide, and a teacher in the Holy Spirit. And we must know that Jesus chose to deliver himself through the Holy Spirit to us because he was limited in his own body. Okay? As an earthly being. The Holy Spirit is not only her earthly because he's a person. He has earthly characteristics. But he's divine with the ability to monitor our heart every moment. Amen in the name of Jesus. Yes, Manny Way on Periscope. God knows you want me to move on from that. God really wants to let that settle in, okay? If you, uh, you all are starting to really recognize that I'm really, I have a real strong, intimate relationship with God where he can move me 
He can tell me what to do, what to say, where to go. He can tell me to pause, draw back, anything. Like God can really tell me anything and I'll be able to discern it. So God was telling me just now that he wants us to pause on that. About the Holy Spirit being a person. He speaks, he testifies, he prays. Oh my goodness. That's why. God is saying, yes. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Anyway, many said, uh, thank you, Father God Almighty, for anointing the Holy Spirit and, and having it fall down on us. Thank you, Jesus. God is wanting to say that everything we can do, the Holy Spirit can do. That's why God wanted me to pause, okay? So just think about anything you're in. But the thing is, he can do what you can do, but he can do what God can do because he 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 works on behalf of God. He knows the will of God, the scripture says, and I'm going to tell you that scripture, okay? All right. I'm so excited about this word, okay? But clearly, just make sure you're understanding that the Holy Spirit operates in your heart by knowing what's in your heart, and he operates by knowing the will of God. And so long as your heart is in the right place, meaning that your heart is in the will of God, Okay, that means your heart is in the word of God. You want to prosper. You want to do all the things that God, the, the word of God is telling you that he wants for you. Then you're activating the power of the Holy Spirit. Okay, activating the power of God in your life. I like to just make sure my key points are clear because, I, you know, we can talk a lot. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. I knew God let me know that someone's going to ask that question. What is the will of God? And that's why I keep uh, 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 communicating that the will of God is in his word. The will of God is in the scripture. God has several wills is what he's saying. God has several wills. God desires that you prosper, okay? God desires that you live life and life more abundantly, okay? God desires that you follow his royal commandments. Yes, we are in grace. Yes, Jesus came to, to uh, uh, forgive our sins, but God doesn't want me to go too far on this. He, he's saying that's enough. Like, he's saying, know my word, okay? Follow my prophet, Okay? Um, and we can, I'm pretty sure he's going to bring us back to that, but God has wanted to do something right now with the topic that we're on. But the will of God, just really quick, that's the word that's coming to you through his biblical scripture, through his woman or man of God. Okay, those are the two bases that you can focus on. Okay? Yes. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for being a person. Someone say that. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for being a person who's with us. You may move on. Okay. And he that, here it goes, and he that searches the heart knows what is the mind of the spirit because he makes intercessions for the saints according to the will of God. He makes intercessions for the saints according to the will of God. Now, this scripture is interesting, okay? Because he is the Holy Spirit, okay? And we know that it's the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. But he is not capitalized. So it's saying that he searches the heart, but he intercedes for the saints. So this is that parallel. All right. I'm going to read this one more time. And he that searches the hearts so of the Holy Spirit knows what is the mind of the spirit because he makes intercessions for the saints. So the Holy Spirit is interceding for you constantly, constantly interceding for you. Okay. And what, and when he says, what scripture? Hold on one second. Let me get that for you. Let me stand up and get that for you. Hold on. Okay. Hold on. I thought I wrote that down, but let me go back to my Bible and get the exact scripture so you can look that up. Perfect. Perfect. So glad you are inquiring. That's how we activate. Yes. So, as you can see right now, I'm opening up my little U version. I highly, uh, highly recommend that you download U version. Okay, you can stop what you're doing. I don't want you to leave the broadcast, but if you need to, uh, do what you need to do because the will of God is in the Word of God. So let's go ahead and get this exact scripture. He that searches the heart knows the will of the Father.
Okay. That's in Romans chapter 8, verse 27. Romans chapter 8, verse 27. And I'll read that again. He that searcheth the hearts, and we're talking about the Holy Spirit, knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit. So God, because he makes intercessions for the saints. Oh. Say right now, the Holy Spirit is making intercessions for me. The Holy Spirit is interceding for me. That means that whatever is not the will of the Father in your life, the Holy Spirit is working to ensure that it doesn't happen. And whatever is the will of the Father for your life, the Holy Spirit is working to make sure that it happens. Oh, you are not alone, woman and man of God. The Holy Spirit is with you, activated with your knowing, activated with your heart. Okay? Oh, God. Now it says, he maketh intercessions for the saints according to the will of God. So not according to your will. Okay, so someone wants to point us to Psalm chapter 40, verse 8. We're going. Because remember... This is an interactive body, okay? So if you all are wanting to share something, we're going there. If that's okay with you, Father, he likes that. Yes, let's go. Put that up again. I think I saw uh, Psalm chapter 40, verse 8. Let's do this. I love that. Thank you. Such interactive spirit. All right? And I see you all on Facebook, too. So we're going to Psalm, everyone. We're going to Psalm. Chapter 8, and then we'll get back to the uh, the word from uh, Jesus specifically for us today. But Jesus likes this interactivity. Okay, I'm in Psalm 48. Okay. 40 and 8. It says, I delight to do thy will. Oh, my God. Yeah, thy law is within my heart. Yes. And when we say the law, we are not referring to, yes. Oh, I love that. And when we're talking, oh, I want to read that more. It, it, it flew away, but I'm going to go back and read that, okay? Make sure you're staying, so comment again. Um, the law, we're wanting to make sure that the law is not like Moses' law, right? Moses' law was only until Jesus came, okay? And it says that in the scripture. So when, we, when we're looking at the law, we're talking about the Ten Commandments, and we call that God's royal law. So yes, the Ten Commandments does not expire. <laughs> some people think that, and this is what I was going to say before, some people think that because Jesus came and we're under grace that we don't have to do any laws. That is incorrect. That was one of my very first broadcasts because God built, built up the foundation of my ministry, of our ministry, Okay, through very specific teachings. And that was one of the teachings that I did. I think it might have been teaching number five about uh, the laws and how we don't want to be in this rigid uh, natural realm law because it was very hard for people to operate in those laws. Like it was set up to fail. Like it was a spiritual law and that only like a divine figure to really fulfill. Natural people were never <laughs> like they just couldn't fulfill such a great law. OK, and that's why, like, we were never supposed to be in sin. So that law came so that we wouldn't operate like so we can get our our ish together. All right. So now that Jesus has come and we're under grace, if we believe in Jesus. OK. Now we need to be operating under Jesus and with the Ten Commandments. OK, so thank you very much. Thank you very, very much for that. Very, very much. Okay. Your heart is the deciding factor of whether or not you receive power. Someone needs to say that. And you can ask your question, okay? Someone says, I have a question on Periscope. I love that. Go ahead and ask it. Okay, the Holy Spirit is a person that knows both, of, uh, uh, both you and God fully. He knows the will of God for you and your heart is the deciding factor for whether or not you receive power. When you are in the will of God, you can access the power of God. When you are in the will of God, you can access the power of God. Oh, 
And some people wonder why, like God will give them a divine instruction and then they disobey it. And then all of a sudden their power is taken away. Like they fall, their life gets out of whack. It's because we receive power by being in the will of God. That's how it works. Okay. All right. So this is our decree. Y'all ready? Say it with me. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for being a 24-hour helper. Who needs 24-hour help? Yes. Yes. Someone says, Jesus, thank you. Hallelujah. Yes. Who needs 24-hour help? I need 24-hour help. Okay? I desire 24-hour help. I humble myself to receive 24-hour help from the Holy Spirit on behalf of Jesus. And that's another thing. We need to see that relationship. Like, we're used to thinking about the Godhead as, like, three separate entities. But when we look at the relationship between Jesus and the Holy Spirit and how the Holy Spirit is at work for Jesus, right? Like, Jesus releases the power of the Holy Spirit, is what John said in the book of John. It's a release. So Jesus has to make the decision to release the power of the Holy Spirit in your life. Isn't that powerful? So having that relationship with Jesus, right, and having an awareness of what the Holy Spirit is doing, invites and activates that power onto you oh i love that i love that yes i like that you said that okay now we will talk about that a little bit more because i i've done reading on that i know exactly your train of thinking okay yes <laughs> many ways says i do i do need 24-hour help yes thank you holy spirit for being a 24-hour helper do you see that how when we thank the Holy Spirit for being our 24-hour helper, like it does, it makes us, God is saying, it makes us one with him. There's something about gratitude that joins spirits is what God is saying, okay? So that's why God wanted us to start our decree with the words, thank you. And then acknowledging who the Holy Spirit is, which is our 24-hour helper, and what he's doing, which is being a help. I welcome you into my life. Say that. Say that. Holy Spirit, I welcome you into my life. And this is what Jesus wanted me to add as an extension to this. And I absolutely love this. He says, he's, he wants us to say, my woman of God is an extension of you. And we're, he's talking about the Holy Spirit. So I was, again, under the dryer. He said, your woman of, tell them that your, their woman of God is an extension of of the Holy Spirit, okay? Because your woman of God discerns the voice of the Holy Spirit. So that's an extension. I am not the Holy Spirit, but I am an extension of the Holy Spirit, okay? So, uh, yes, take that from Jesus directly, okay? Coming from my mouth. I absolutely love that. So look at that. That was just the first section of our teaching <laughs> out of three, Okay? But it all ties together. We have, that was our first decree. We have two more decrees coming. So get ready. I love that. I love that. I love that. I love that. I, I can feel some of your joy on the line. I see all the hearts. Welcome, cousin. I see John. Welcome, Jason. Okay, everyone, I love this. I love you all. What you need is... <laughs> The power of the Holy Spirit released by Jesus. But the power is not what he does, but who he is. You need the who of God. Someone say that. I need the who of God. Thank you. Anyway, you're always on fire. Say that. I need the who of God. Amen. Amen. I see all of my regular viewers. I love you all. Thank you. Welcome back. Our last broadcast was off the freaking meters. God is always taking us to the next level in the anointing. Okay? Today, he wants to say, it's all, having the power of God is all about what's in your heart. So if you just joined us, know that it's about what's in your heart. And we were connecting that to the word of God. And then we did another extension together interactively that the word of God contains the will of God through the commandments and your woman of God. Okay? Okay? And so much more. 
Now, God, because God is not a limited God. God is not even limited. He's wanting me to say right now, God is not even limited to his commandments. Okay? The will of God can come upon you like a spirit. The will of God can come upon you like a spiritual presence. And if you are in the will of God, okay, then you will be in position to discern that spirit upon you. Okay? Get on out of here. Okay. So, yes, we need the who of God. It says, even Jesus' disciples were not ready without the Holy Spirit. And they were trained by him for three years. They knew what Jesus did. So the action part of Jesus. They learned his principles, saw his demonstrations, asked direct questions. Imagine us. Like, we, you know, we have our dialogue and we can talk to the Holy Spirit. We can talk to Jesus directly together. Okay? Oh, you should. You guys got to go back and see the prophetic on that broadcast from uh, last week. But God wants us to stay here. I just got to promote that, okay? Because this is a continual process. But God is saying that he, it's not about knowing what God does. It's about knowing what he is. That That's how we release that power. Because even though the disciples had Jesus' attention all that time and they knew what he did, they didn't have his power. They knew like no other people what Jesus did. But Jesus still said, amen. I see those lights. Jesus still said, I'm going to have to release power to you, even though you all know me the best. Even though you all know me the best. So that there's another demonstration in the word of God where we see, yes, where we see that we need the Holy Spirit for power. Crystal, I wish you would have been here earlier, girl. <laughs> hey, good to see you, okay? Goodness, goodness, goodness. Now, you know, we always want to back up. Okay, now, now again, the word and the spirit of God is not limited to the Bible and his word as it was written, okay? It's not limited there. But if there is biblical backing for what we're saying, we always want there. And there is loads of biblical backing. So I'm going to give you biblical backing for what I just said, okay? Again, the disciples learned his principles, saw his demonstrations, asked direct questions, communed with Jesus, and Jesus said, you are going to still need the Holy Spirit to have my power, even though you know all my works. It says, I am sending the promise of the Father. So this is Jesus. Hey, amen, welcome. This is Jesus. He said, he said to his people, stay in the city until you are clothed Say, I'm clothed with power from on high. I am clothed with power from on high. And if you want to see that, that's in Luke chapter 24, verse 49. You are clothed with power from on high. It says, but you will receive the power when the Holy Spirit comes to you. Okay? And that's in Acts. That's in, uh, that's in the book of Acts. So, look at that. We can see people demonstrate God all the time, all we want. But until we ask the Father to release the Holy Spirit to us and develop a relationship with the Father, then and only then will we be empowered to have the releasing of the Holy Spirit upon us, which is the true power. Oh, being in the will of God. So here's the next decree, our second decree. Say this with me. Father. I receive the release of your power through the Holy Spirit. Father, I receive the release of your power through the Holy Spirit. Okay? Level three. And then we'll open up the broadcast for any prophetic visions that the Holy Spirit wants to uh, send to us. Okay? <laughs> Crystal said, dang. Nicole said, you speak that. No, she said, yes, speak that. <laughs> Thank you, Nicole. Okay. And Crystal, yes, make sure you watch the replay. Set it up. Watch you watch watch the broadcast so we can set it up for you. And set it off for you. Set it up and set it off. In the name of Jesus. <laughs> By the way, if you um want to be invited to in Chicago, um, like a small meetup, okay? Only ladies, okay? Can you say that again? Yes, I'll say that again for our our lovely Periscope viewer here. Um, inbox me your email address, okay? Because I'm thinking about having like a little roof, rooftop uh, 
you know, just gathering for just the ladies who are closest uh, to the ministry, okay, in Chicago. Uh, and if you want to travel to get here, that, that's perfectly fine, so I welcome you, okay, but like ladies, um, yes, I'll say that decree again, and I'll, I'll summarize. We need to know that the power is about who God is, not what he does. And the revelation was that the disciples knew so much about what God did. They were with him for three years. They, they, I mean, demonstrations, miracles, um, oh my gosh. And they still didn't have the power of God, okay? So someone wanted me to summarize that on Periscope. He said, but you will receive the power when the Holy Spirit comes, even though you know all of this, all directly from me as Jesus. Goodness gracious. I mean, that is just, if, if activating the Holy Spirit should be your, fir your first and your primary objective this week, if you haven't already, activating the Holy Spirit and acknowledging that it's the release from, he, the Holy Spirit is the release from Jesus. Oh, 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 y'all. Root that in your spirit. Root that in your spirit. And even if you've only been talking to Jesus, even if, right? If you're a woman of God, he's like, Jesus, Jesus, please do that for me. Jesus is like, uh, I got the Holy Spirit here on my behalf, <laughs> right? That has a, has a specific function to help you with this. I need you to engage him. So if you haven't taken the leap, from talking to only Jesus, God is just wanting me to say this right now. Talking to only Jesus, talk to Jesus. He's saying, continue to talk to Jesus because it's about the relationship with Jesus. But he's saying, acknowledge your helper. Acknowledge your helper. And realize that your power is in your helper. Oh! <laughs> your power is in your helper. Now, your power is in Jesus because he has to release the helper. Right? It's like, Give me, give me a, uh, give me a uh, simile, God. Uh, it's like food has power, right? So if you're eating food, thank you. If you're eating food, it makes you feel good. But it takes the power of being able to buy the food for the food to be able to re be released to you. You see what I'm saying? So Jesus has the power to release that. He has the money. He has the currency. He, has, he, he, he is a holder of the Holy Spirit. But the food is what's going to nourish you. The food is what's on the inside of you. Just like, thank you, God, for that revelation. I feel that. Gosh, the glory is just, the feeling of the glory of God is just so strong. Okay? You know how you digest your food? God is saying that the Holy Spirit is on the inside of us just like that. But food is in our digestive system, but the Holy Spirit is upon our heart, like digesting and discerning what's in our heart. Okay? And he's seeking out anything that is in your heart Yes, 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 fall upon them. Yes, many way. Many way. I keep saying many way, but I know it's many way. Keep going. Okay. The, oh, what I was saying was the, the spirit, the Holy Spirit is in our heart trying to find anything that aligns with the will of God. So he's like twofold. Okay, this is what's in your heart. This is the will of God, okay? If I can find a match, then I can release power, okay? If I can find a match between your will and God's will, then I can help you with something, right? I can deliver financial prosperity. I can deliver health to you, right? I, if you Once you start sowing seed, right, the will of God is that you be in perfect health. So then if there's something in your heart that knows, like, hey, if I sow seed and I release what's in my hand for my health, right? I'm now operating in the will of God because that's the sowing and reaping principle. The Holy Spirit's like, match, okay? Let's get to work. Yes, Crystal said, wow, you see that? God was working in me today, Crystal, like, like setting it off. And when God was talking to me before the broadcast today, he's like, I'm going to really release a strong word. And he says that, but it's like a diff, like God be feeling his mojo, right? He's like, I'm coming today. Like, y'all should hear God in my spirit. I kid you not. God, be ready for this, y'all. Like, he knows that I'm going to focus. I'm going to permit his word to come through me, right? And I, I'm going to permit the anointing. And he gets really excited. And he anticipates it. And the Holy Spirit does so because the Holy Spirit is a person. He's helping us. Ooh, someone says, what's the difference between what's in our heart and what we want? That's a great question. 
um, the desires of your heart, right? I mean, desire, the, the, your desires are in your heart. They are your heart. So when you desire, good, good. I'll add that word. When you desire, right, in your heart, what is the will of God? Again, now the Holy Spirit has a match, and now the, the power can be manifested, okay? Like my life, my, the power wasn't manifested in my life until I started recognizing and understanding and really believing in my heart God's principles, God's uh, uh laws, God's principles, God's sowing and reaping process. Oh my gosh. And the Holy Spirit was like, yep, I found a match. Let's go. Right? And, you know, released my brand new car yesterday and all of that. Okay? So the Holy Spirit is always on go time. The Holy Spirit is always on go time. The Holy Spirit is always on go time. Okay? Oh, the Holy Spirit is waiting on you. The power is already there. He's waiting on you. Wait, hey, hey. You gonna be in the will of God or not? Now, someone someone's asking some powerful questions here on Periscope. Um, is the desire of your heart selfish? No, especially because God God desires that you prosper above all things. But God wants you to have the desires of your heart. Okay, so long as they are within His will. Okay. Now, and it's interesting because God will God will permit certain things to happen in your life that are just based on what you want in your heart because you need to experience that to get to the next level. Like, because some people will be focused and stagnated, and God is, like, wanting to talk about this. Some people will be stagnated on the desire of their heart that may or may not be in the will of God. Like, if it is in the will of God, it's not going to be stagnation because it's going to be equipped with the power of the Holy Spirit to move forward. But, hey, Melissa, good to see you. But if you have a desire that is not in the will of God, it can still manifest even though it's not in the will of God because God wants you to have your desires, and that's even in the Bible, okay? So uh, one of the things I remember a long time ago thinking, like, if a woman's like, this is my husband, right? <laughs> and, like, you have this, or a, a man is like, this is my wife, right? And it may not be that person. And then you all of a sudden go and you get that person, or, or this is my job, this is my career, right? And you go in that direction, because some of you are, like, not really in the relationship realm. Some of you are more in the career realm. Or some of you are in the health realm, financial realm. Like, I try to involve as many realms as possible. But if that's in your heart, it will manifest because you need to, you're going to attract that based on divine laws and principles. Sowing and reaping. Like, you're sowing. God is saying you're sowing. Thank you, Jesus, for that clarity. You're sowing your heart into that desire. So you're going to reap, if not that, ex that, not that exact thing, something very similar to that is what he's saying. Okay? Um... So everything we do, when you go to work in the morning, okay, I'm going to be going back to work and going back to school. Uh, this summer I'm off uh, temporarily off for about one more week, and then I'm going to be going back to school because I'm in my second grad program um, for teaching uh, math. Um, just to give you guys a little bit of details about the woman of God, right? Um, as we go back to work and as we sow ourselves, we're going to reap that thing. Like we're going to reap what we sow. So you want to make sure that your desires are the will of God so you can reap what the will of God is. <laughs> okay, okay, I, I, pray, I pray to God and I decree, right? Because we need to go as a body, as a church, we need to go from praying all the time to start decreeing stuff. We got to decree that thing. And I'll catch myself. I'm like, Father God, and I'll be praying. Like, there's a time for prayer and worship. But when there's a time to decree, we're going to decree that thing. Okay, so we're, so we're, going, to, we're going to decree that the desires of God's heart will become our desires in our heart. Okay? Yes, you're welcome. Such a refreshing presence you are. Thank you so much. Please continue those questions because it edifies us all. Sharpen, uh, iron sharpens iron. Okay? Same substance sharpens the same substance. So I just want to say your woman of God is here to not just feed you uh, what what's on... Um, um, the agenda before the broadcast, right? Like Jesus is with us all at all times. So if there's something that's on your heart, Jesus wants to discuss that. All right? All right. Number three, before we open up the prophetic side, it says don't chase power, chase relationship. That's how we get the power. So we want to know Jesus, okay? Good to see you all. I see our new Periscope viewers. If you haven't followed me on Periscope yet, Esla, hey, how are you? Um, if you haven't followed me on Periscope, go ahead, click on my profile, okay? Click follow so you can get live notifications when I come on, okay?
okay? And same on Periscope. Update your notifications so that I, when you when it says follow me, you know, you want to put get notifications so it can show up as soon as I go live. Uh, and right now the plan is I'll be going live on Sundays and Wednesdays. That's just a little, all the spirit wants me to go ahead and say that. <laughs> Um, we're not chasing power, so we're not chasing the power of God, right? We're chasing a relationship with God to get uh, that relationship first and foremost. And then after that, the release of the, we understand that the release of power follows that. So we want a relationship with Jesus above all, above all, above all, above all. Once I started, and God just wants me to share this with you. Once I started uh, saying, Father God, I really want a relationship. Like I want a, an intimate relationship with you. God started talking to me more. Like it was very quickly. Like, okay, let's do, let's talk about this. Let's go to this chapter. Let's let's read. Let me let me get you this book. Let me right. So God is like the the feeling honestly that I get, and I say honestly, I don't need to say that, but I, I do like that word because I just want to be extremely transparent. I'm like always. I really appreciate the fact that Jesus is so willing to be my friend. Okay. Like, I, you know, I know I'm, I'm a great person, you know, but it's like God wanting to be our friend, like God, <laughs> and being accessible and ready to be our friend and ready to work with us through the power of the Holy Spirit. It just makes me fall deeper in love with Jesus, okay? And that's, that's yeah, someone says amen. That, that is just so amazing to me. So take that for yourself. As God tonight. Yes, ask God tonight for a relationship with him and watch him, watch him release the power of the Holy Spirit and release himself to you in the name of Jesus, okay? Because that's what he wants. This is his word. This is not what Aaliyah Connect wants to talk about. I never come on here talking about what I want to talk about. I always wait on the Spirit of God to guide me to the right words to determine what we're talking about, okay? That's for you new peeps that's joining us to, uh, to get to know your woman of God, Okay. Um, we want to know Jesus. We want to talk to Jesus. We want to meditate on Jesus. So not even talking or trying to know, just, just sitting and allowing the Spirit of God to pour in us what he wants, okay? What he wants. That's what meditation is. Some people, always, some people say, you know, um, some people uh, say, um, what is... Meditation is release. It's trying your best to release everything that's on your heart or on your mind to allow the inpouring of God. God has been moving me to do yoga. And so um, I've been wanting to do that. And I think that's because there's more of a pouring that he wants to release to me uh, through that process. Okay. So yoga, yoga, peace. If you all uh, are doing yoga, um, God likes that because he's pushing me to that. Focus on Jesus as a person, and his person is the Holy Spirit, okay? As you build your relationship with Jesus, you are doing the same with the Holy Spirit, okay? Just say, when you're talking to Jesus, talk directly to Jesus, and when you're talking to the Holy Spirit, they just want me to say this right now, talk directly to the Holy Spirit, because it's two different functionalities, okay? God is the, Jesus is the releaser of the power of the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit is the person that's working and discerning what's in your heart, okay, on Jesus' behalf. Knowing both your heart and the heart of the Father at all times, omnipresently. It's Jesus' manifestation of himself as a spirit. Okay? Yay. Amen. I love that energy. Keep that energy going anyway. So here's our decree. And we'll slow down on that to let that take root. Because <clears throat> God is showing me a, a, a word, a root take time, takes time to travel, right? takes time to travel. And God is reminding me of this. He was talking to me in my spirit earlier today. Hey, because he'll tell me a lot. Slow down. Slow down. And I'll. And if you see me do that, that's what, that's what I'm being told, and that's why I'll do that. But here's the thing that God told me at about 1 something today, 1.30 p.m. He said, you know, people go to school, and they get educated and the process of the typical educational system in the U.S. is like study, right? Study a content, take the test, and then often people forget. And then they'll, they'll like put it in the back of their brain or access it when they need it, right? I'm talking just generally, okay? Generally speaking, yes. But God, the way God works and how, what he wants to tell us today is he 
doesn't operate like that. He wants things to really take root. He wants, and I don't want to just say things. I'll make that better. He wants the power of his word, he said, to take root in our heart. And he said that means that we have to repeat certain things. Okay? We can't just, hey, hey, I love that. He said that it's okay to repeat because I find when I was, when God was building me up to do this and giving me my mantles, my, my first mantles to teach men and be a minister, I would be like, oh God, I already talked about that. Like I can move on, but he had to kept tell, he had to keep telling me like, no, no, you got to break out of that way of thinking that, that educational, you know, bachelor, high school, bachelor's degree, master's degree, second master's degree type thinking where you're learning, executing the test and moving on. No. This is a totally different process. So that's the root that God wants you to put in your heart. Meditate on the word of God. Slow down. Isn't that awesome how we were just talking about meditation and God? God has such a way of doing things that is just so powerful. Because I didn't plan on saying that right. I just trusted God that it, that would come up at the right time. God said, thank you for saying that. Okay. Thank you, Jesus. Decree. Jesus. Say this with me. He said, say this together. Okay, Jesus, I desire to have an intimate relationship with you. Take me over. Jesus, I desire to have an intimate relationship with you. Our relationship is rooted in my heart. That is a rooted desire of my heart and my question to you is a part of the heart it's a speedy heart okay okay <laughs> thank you Jesus thank you Jesus thank you Jesus we desire to have an intimate relationship with you please say that at home where you're at because that's how we're gonna kick this thing off to the next level starting tonight all this week and watch what God does he's going to release the power of the Holy Spirit he's going to release the power of the Holy Spirit and then our power the power in our life will be activated so long as the will of God and the will of our hearts are in alignment we will see the manifestation of God's power in our life in the name of Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Someone says, thank you, God. Someone say, thank you, God, for this word. Thank you, God, for this word. Thank you, God, for this word. Okay? Thank you, God, for this word. Oh. Thank you, Jesus. God said, you're getting stronger. Your might is getting stronger. Okay? Letting that take root. The power of God is upon you. Yes. Oh, someone says, thank you, God, for this word. Oh, yes, yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus, shout glory, shout glory, shout glory, shout glory. Thank you, Father, for teaching us tonight that you release the power of the Holy Spirit unto us. And the Holy Spirit is amazing and magnificent because he's operating in our heart and in the divine according to your will at the same time. And he's searching for a match between what is in our heart and what is in the will of God. Oh, oh. And because now we have manifested that as a natural understanding in our natural mind and on our spiritual being, we now can take action and we now can put energy into developing a mindset and a set of desires that are in the will of God, 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 because we know that that's the way that your power is released.
Ashabobo, Leke, Russo, Daka, Tisia, Baka, Noko, Sika, Reka, Peke, Noko, Sika, Varia, Kashia. Oh, Jesus, thank you, thank you. Oh, Jesus, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I feel the power of the Holy Spirit, thank you. Oh. Jesus does say, someone just said that on Periscope. Feel the electricity of God go into your body right now. Feel it, feel it. Let the transfer happen on tonight. 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 Let the transfer happen on tonight, happen on tonight in the name of Jesus. By the power of the Holy Spirit. Make the match. God is saying, make the match. Make the match. Make the match. Jesus, 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 Jesus. I hear you, Crystal. Yes, Jesus, 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 Jesus. Periscope, I'm putting you on my uh, iPad right now so I can see your comments up close, okay? Because I delivered. We're about to get into the prophetic word, but I delivered the exact words that God pointed me to to deliver to you today, okay? So that was uh, that was the first thing that was on my screen. Now I can switch over to Periscope. Asha! Woo! They can also. Daria. Waka. Si. Si no so. Loco. Bura. Bara. Crystal. I see your question. Oh, Jesus, 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 Jesus. Follow us, follow us, follow us, follow us. Follow the Holy Spirit. Go ahead, click, 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 click. Follow, 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 follow. I see your follows on Periscope. I see you share, 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 share. Share this broadcast. Someone's going to need to see this when they wake up in the morning is what Jesus said. Someone's going to see this. Someone's going to need to see this when they wake up in the morning is what Jesus said. Okay? You never know what's going on in someone's heart. You never know how you can deliver someone with just a share. Just a share. Just a share. God says when you share his word, you're releasing the power of the Holy Spirit onto them. Onto them. Onto them. Onto them. Release this power of the Holy Spirit onto your people in the name of Jesus. Vaka. Rese, noko, tisa. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Crystal asked a great question on Facebook Live. She said, oh, thank you for sharing. Thank you for sharing. I saw that. I believe that was Diane. Thank you so much. Um, some of you will share. The Holy Spirit says he knows that some of you will share once this broadcast is over too. Okay, the sharing does not end. Some of you, I see you all when I go to work and when I'm in my day, I see you all coming back to the broadcast to watch. I love seeing your faces and your user profiles as you are coming back to feed on the word of Jesus through the Holy Spirit. I love it. I love it. I love it. I receive it. I take it in the name of Jesus. Come on back home. Come on back home. Okay? Come on back home. Someone say that. I'm coming back home. I'm going to feed on this word in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Crystal said, and she was very transparent, she said, and she shared it with someone, Liberty Jones, when she gets here, welcome, Liberty, okay? You were invited by a true woman of God. We are all women and men of God in the name of Jesus. Oh, gosh, y'all, this glory is too strong. I mean, I, I'm trying to focus on Crystal's question, and I'm coming, but I kid you not, I'm just, I have to keep releasing this power. I have to keep being in it. I have to stay in the stream, Okay? This is what we call the release of the power of the Holy Spirit in one dimension because God's power is released, okay, in different ways. God's power is released through the prophetic. God's power is released through teachings. I've seen God's power released through literal energy being transferred to people that are knocking them down. My prophet does that. Prophet Joshua wants to knock somebody down with the Holy Spirit power, okay? God is saying there is an infinite supply of my power. 
He's just waiting on the match. He's waiting on someone to activate the power of the Holy Spirit. I don't even do the titles of these broadcasts on my own. I do nothing on my own. I welcome the Holy Spirit to do everything with me in the name of Jesus. Everything. 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 You all need to say that. I do nothing alone. Decree that. I do nothing alone. I do nothing alone. I do nothing alone. Thank you. Okay? I do nothing alone. I do nothing alone. I take and I welcome and I appreciate and I discern and I will, I will the Holy Spirit in every aspect of my life in the name of Jesus. Now Jesus wants to focus on Crystal's question. Crystal said, what happens when you have desires in your heart that are not in the will of God? And it's interesting that when I said the word will, before I gave more attention to your question, God reminded me that it is about your will. It is about your will, okay? So if you have desire, desires in your heart, and let me open this up on Periscope because God really wants me to go deep on this question for a moment here. I'm so, I'm so deep in the Holy Ghost. Let me open up this specific broadcast. Okay, we're live. Boom. Oh, Jesus. Okay. Oh. Turn it down. <laughs> okay. Father God, help me. Holy Spirit, help me. Crystal says, what do you do when you have desires in your heart that are not in the will of God? He said, this is what Jesus just said very quickly. He said, ask the Holy Spirit to help you remove those desires from your heart. Because the mistake that people make is thinking that they have to handle their heart on their own is the pure word from the Holy Spirit, from Jesus. He's saying that you are not alone with your own desires. You have a choice. You can submit the desires that are in your heart to Jesus and to the Holy Spirit and watch the power of God start to clean what is happening in your heart. Okay? It's as simple as that. Submission. Right submission. Because when we have a wrong desire... We have conjured up some uh, appetite for something that God does not desire. Something that is, it could be satanic. Something that just does not put us in the perfect will of God. So when you recognize that God is saying that's the first step. And then the second step is desiring that it be removed. Because even the Holy Spirit can be tasked to help you. But if you don't have a desire to remove that will, because you can have a knowing that it's there. Yes, be obedient. You can have a knowing that it's there, but you may not have a desire and a knowing to remove the wrong desire. So you see how Jesus is feeding us this, this wisdom here? So have the knowing that it's in your heart, a wrong desire that is not in the will of God. Have a desire to remove it and then submit to the Holy Spirit and ask, for divine assistance to correct the atmosphere of your heart is what I heard God say. Isn't that beautiful? I don't think I've ever said that ever. But the Holy Spirit says ask him to help you correct the atmosphere of your heart. Wow. Wow. Good night, Manny Way. Yes. No, we're no King Cyrus 78. I'm so happy that you said that because I really want you to be here and to be communicating. She's saying wrong desire. Okay. So she's saying she wants to be in the will of God. <laughs> someone, I think someone misinterpreted what you were saying. Okay. That's why I don't block easily. Someone was uh, last week, someone was making all kind of comments, you know, just in the, I'll say this really quick about, you know, just my physical appearance and, you know, just kind of, you know, some of you were here and I was in so deep in the sphere, but I saw, it, but I didn't block. By the end of the broadcast, he was crying. Like he was saying, 
oh my God, oh my God, I'm so sorry. God bless you. This is bless me. I'm, he, he kept saying, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. The power of the Holy Spirit hit him. Okay? And he would, and I'll just be blunt, right? Let's be real. I love just being open on this, using, using whatever language the Holy Spirit allows us to use. He was talking about my boobs. Okay? He was talking about my body. And you know, like I, I saw it, but again, I, I some is just like keep keeping the flow because there are some people that'll just keep saying stuff and I'll, I will block, but something on my spirit just was like, just let it let that go, right? I kid you not, he was on the whole broadcast. Watch, and we were last week we were on here for two and a half hours. I don't know, he came on in the like in towards the middle, but not not even the middle, like towards the beginning. And again, he stayed the whole time, the Holy Spirit got to his heart. And got rooted in his heart, and he was apologetic. And so, um, I, I don't know. It's just I don't know why God mentioned that just now, but the guy just wanted to to say that. Um, <clears throat> even like, oh, that's why God wanted me to say that. The your heart can change very quickly with the power of the Holy Spirit, is what he's saying. Okay, when the power of the Holy Spirit hits your heart, you can have an immediate change but it takes a willingness, okay? And a continuation of the conversation and the relationship with the Holy Spirit, okay? Kina, hey, Kina, Kina, hey. She, Kina says, that's great advice. That's a word. Yes, Kina, girl. We are open. This atmosphere is open for the Holy Spirit to edify us. You know what I'm saying? Shoot, shoot. Holy Spirit, we like you. Say that. Holy Spirit, we like you a lot. Yeah, you know, we need the love of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit's laboring, laboring for us all, right? All in our heart, trying to find a match between God's will and the, our will, God's desire for us and our desire, and then manifesting power in our life according to the will of God as he makes a match. What a revelation. I've never heard that preached. Never. That's a, and that's what I'm saying. That remember earlier when I was saying that God's word is not just limited to what's in the Bible. God uses His prophet to continue His word. That's why you want to stay close to your woman of God or your man of God. Okay, you want to stay real close, and, and not just for sowing purpose. You want to stay close for sowing purpose because that's how you sow. Just how you go to work every day. And you sow, you sow your hours and you sow your time and you reap an hourly wage or a salary. God's divine law, that's within the divine law, sowing and reaping. So when you sow into your woman of God who's working among you and laboring and, and teaching and, and, and meditating with the Holy Spirit and delivering your word and being used by Jesus for you specifically, when you sow in an anointed soil like mine is with the hand of God and financial ministers upon me, right? Based on the decision of God, then you reap. You reap. That's how I reap. I start sowing. So, you want to stay close to reap, to sow and to reap, okay? And God wants me to not rush on that, because I, I was going to rush to the get, get, get sowing and reaping, y'all, because my life changed once I started. Everything changed in this apartment when I started sowing and reaping. I was in this apartment laying on my bed, going through a career change. The college that I was working for was closing down and I didn't know where I was going to work next. I did not know. I, I knew I had uh, a master's degree. I knew I had a bachelor's I knew I was well educated. Um, I knew I had a background in uh, television but I wanted to not do television at that time. I wanted to do something different. Something that didn't really heavily rely on my creative skills. I wanted to build more hard, like hard skills. I was producing, I was doing a whole lot of stuff, which includes hard skills. There were a lot of soft skills with that, but I was like, I'm going into some hard skills. But I didn't know what my next step was. I had an open door through someone that God sent to me at the right time, uh, Susan Wade, okay? And then Anthony Williams, and then all these other people. But that college was closing. And I remember sitting here watching Daystar. Medina Pullings came on, and she was like, teaching me about the sowing and reaping process. Hey, so I said, hey. She was, hey, girl. Emil, and I, I think that's a woman, Emil. She started teaching me about the sowing and reaping process. And lo and behold, I started reaping. I got a job uh, in the same building, y'all, in the content that I wanted to do. Remember I told you I wanted to do hard skills? I said, I want to teach math. 
because I had a background in like the stock market and, and print, but it was all media. Like I had a big media background, but I wanted an education foreground. <laughs> I know it might not be a word. I wanted for education future and hard skills. So she started telling me about like sewing for like divine connections. And that was, I think that was one of my first seeds. And that's what I read, divine connections. But I had to sow the seed. Had I not sown the seed, my life would not have changed. Okay. She was on Rob Parsley's uh, program. And so I've told the story time and time again. I won't take too long, but God is just wanting me to just release this because this is God focuses on my womb a lot. And I'm still discerning what that is, but it's like his power is like centered here. So like I'll, I'll be in my mind, my 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 mind, my my conscious up here, but I'll be like feeling the presence of God in here, and He's like, like He's telling me like take stuff out of my womb. It's very interesting. We'll follow up on that, <laughs> but like you'll see me do this for a reason because I'm literally releasing what God is telling me to release from my womb. Like my experiences, and, and He dwell like all that's is in your womb. Okay, um, and and they say you have your real heart is in your womb, and when you think about the Fibonacci sequence. That if you come from the, the this area, the, you spiral out from the umbilical cord. So, like, careful with this. Follow this, okay? Yes, God can change your financial situation overnight. Yes. So, I sold the seeds, started reaping, and I kept sowing. I kept reaping, y'all. And it got to a point where I took, like, six months off uh, from sowing. It felt like about, about six, I don't know, about six months. Um and um because god you know god had been working with me i had been doing my ministry this whole time uh since 2012 just little by little by little and then god had me do more in 2014 and then uh in 2017 i started my ministry in october and then about uh, a month or two into my ministry um i i someone shared a broadcast of prophet joshua holmes and then i was like that's my man of god okay and so I started listening to him, and then I started uh, sewing into his ministry, and I started sewing again in general. And then my life started to take uh, even more dimension, okay? But um, before that, I think I had sold for an exam in February, and then I sold again. Yeah, yeah, it was February, March. Yeah, like it was a little bit of time. But I was sewing, but I took a little pause, and he got me back sewing, which was great. Um, so your what your God wants me to say he uses, like he used my prophet, he'll use your woman of God or your man of God to continue his word. Because God never wants you to start stop sowing and reaping. As soon as your seed stops, your life stops. Your, because your seed is how you decree what's going on in your future. Okay? So I always talk to you about the seed. Like there's always levels of the seed. Okay? But get, get sowing. And if you want to sow tonight, I invite you. Everything is all built. God has everything set up. On my website, our website, aliaconnect.com, just click on contact. So, and if you need help with your seed instructions, oh my God, y'all. Gosh, if I could just summarize how many miracles I'm seeing with people just sowing into Aaliyah Connect Ministries. Most recently, and I, and God, and do I have permission to say this? Okay. God wants me to wait on one thing. It has something to do with uh, one of my family members. Um, but God wants me to wait, but it's very powerful, very, very powerful. Um, if you need something, get sewing for it and name your seed with the scripture. And if you need help, I can help you with it. All right. So that's, that's that. Okay. How, do we have any other questions that I address everything or did I miss a point? Cause y'all know I just flow with the Holy spirit. <laughs> Diane Jackson said, that's deep. That's described in Genesis. Yes, Diane. Hey, good to see you. And Sharon is here. Sharon Hughes. Holy spirit. Is there anything you'd like me to say before we move into the prophetic? No, okay, you're smooth in. Okay, we're smooth in. Matthew four fifteen. Okay, yeah. Someone, someone, someone on Periscope says you all. He wants you all to look at Matthew four fifteen. Okay, Holy Spirit, Father God, Jesus Christ. If there is any prophetic impartation that you would like to give us on tonight, Father God, my mind is open and ready to receive. My heart is open. My will is open. I am a completely open vessel for you. Oh, ah, uh, I saw hair and then I saw chains, chains. Um, when I think of chains, I think of imprisonment. But since God told me hair and then chains, it could be wisdom. Because when I think of hair, I always think about uh, Samson and then his hair being wisdom and then 
then it was chains. So with so chains upon wisdom, chains upon your wisdom. Is there a chain upon some wisdom? Father, get feed it. I'm ready. When your heart is not in the right place, there is a chain on your wisdom, is what the Holy Spirit is saying. So, so Jesus is saying that again, if you have wrong desires, that immediately puts a chain on the wisdom that you can access from God. Because, and let's just bring this back uh, here, right? As, as the Holy Spirit continues to feed us. That makes perfect sense. If we are, if we have a desire in our heart, our mind is going to go in that direction. And I love those hearts. Thank you so much. And so, even in the natural, we're thinking and we're focusing on what, whatever we desire. So if we have a wrong desire, we have a wrong focus, and then we can't get the wisdom of God. Okay? So when we do have the right heart, state of heart, then we have the, the right focus, which allows us to give our attention to the wisdom of God and draw in Jesus and that relationship, and then have the outpouring of the Holy Spirit be upon us. Thank you, Jesus. Again, God wants to talk about the heart. And I told you all, that's exactly what he said. Before I even started uh, focusing on the word, it was like when I was like getting myself ready, right? Before I started writing for us. So God said, take it, take it a little lower. That's what I heard. And I see those hearts. Hey, Jay, God said, take it a little lower. So what do you mean, Father? Because, you know, when God says take it lower, that means uh, make it even more foundational. So, so God wants us to talk about. Release to us, Father. What do you see? Holy, Oh, that's great. Thank you, Holy Spirit. God, uh, the Holy Spirit is inviting me to ask him what he sees in the heart of people as he is searching the hearts okay and then we'll we'll see what the holy spirit wants to take where to take us from there eyes in wrong uh wrong uh uh wrong wisdom eyes and wrong wisdom is the first thing he he showed me because i saw an eye and then i saw uh like scriptures but not divine scriptures okay so that's those are eyes in wrong places so having your eye in the wrong place will produce a wrong focus and produce a wrong heart. Lower, low. God keeps saying, go lower, go lower, go lower, go deeper, go deeper. Oh, satanic appetites. Woo, Jesus, thank you for leading me deeper. It was the enemy who put the root in us to have wrong desire. Okay, thank you. I see those hearts. That's where that came from. So God has wanted to remove the guilt from you. Wow. Thank you, Jesus. God has wanted to remove the guilt from you for having a wrong desire. Okay? You need to know that it is your will to follow Satan and wrong desires, but it was his seed that produced an appetite, an need to have the wrong desire, which was not to follow the will of God, which was not to follow the instruction of God. So it's not fundamentally, because there, there is a part of you, and when we go back to our root, we are of God. You are pure. It's your divine identity to be pure. It is your right to have a pure heart. God desires that. It's in you already to be pure. God kept telling me, go lower, go lower, go lower, go lower. And I couldn't understand why, but God is trying to get to the root and the foundation of who you are, which is his breath, which is him, which is him. Okay, and so and it's pure and it's divine. So fundamentally, your heart was created to be divine, and it was Satan that came to impart the desire to have wrong focus, and we can remove that since that's not fundamentally who we are. When we accept Christ Jesus, we're born again and we're back in alignment with God. That's critical. That's critical. You have to accept Jesus to get into this covenant, to get into this purity. To get into this blessed ground, or else you're operating on the curse of Adam and Eve with the serpent, which is the cursed ground. Okay, 
Jesus was the seed that God said would bruise Satan's head, which is delivering, essentially delivering the saints back into his hands. Okay? Yes, God bless you, prophetess and saints. Yes, follow Jesus 1983. Love that. So when we accept Jesus, we're now operating from a new, new being, a new spirit. Okay? Let that be your foundation is what Jesus is saying. Let that be your foundation. Purity, him, it's there. It's there. That's who you are foundationally. God says, don't ever forget that. Don't ever forget that. You are pure. You are pure. Satan is the one that is impure. Satan is the one that has the desire to exalt himself above God. That's why, that's why the Bible says never desire to exalt yourself or any other above God. And you see when God's temper got out of control, it was because they started exalting other gods before the Father. Okay? And so that was the original sin. And that's what led to everything else. So when we distance ourselves from that, then we are remaining in Jesus and our purity in Christ Jesus. Okay? Thank you, Father. Because that's important. Anything that the Holy Spirit wants to give forth to us and anything that relates to who we are in Christ and how we are to live and prosper is oh so important, Jesus. Thank you. What was rotten, because God has shown me like a rotten egg, what was rotten is going to be removed. What was rotten, I'm not even going to say it's going to be. What is rotten is removed. Yeah, go ahead. Tell me what is it. Uh, tell me. Write, write it out for me. Matthew 4.15. Go ahead and write it out. What is rotten and I'll, and I'll see if the Holy Spirit wants to give that focus, okay? And we'll, we'll, so we'll do that. What is rotten is removed. Oh, so that's for someone specifically. Because God showed me a, literally a rotten egg. Literally a rotten egg. And so if some of you know that something is rotting in your life, or a rotting relationship, a rotting belief system, a rotting... Uh, a uh, self-image is what the Holy Spirit is saying. A rotten past is what the Holy Spirit said. The Holy Spirit is saying, with me, it's gone. With me, it's gone. Okay? Tell me specifically, truth three, what do you want to talk about uh, with that? Okay? With the Holy Spirit, it is gone. Hmm. Mm. All things rotten. It's Holy Spirit, if that's gone, give us more revelation of what is. Then. Tell us. We want to know. We like this. <laughs> he had me think of Kiwi. Yes. Follow Jesus 1983 says, my past is gone. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All rotten pasts are gone. I decree and declare with the power of the Holy Spirit upon us. That's what the Holy Spirit said. That's interesting truth for you. I see that. I see that. Very interesting. Are you talking about you want to get to the tribe of Judah? That's what you want to talk about? <laughs> yes, truth for you. I see you. Yeah, if you, okay, I'll say something real quick on that. Jesus is a descendant of the tribe of Judah. Because uh, someone on Periscope was wanting to talk about the tribes and how he said 10 of the 12 tribes were uh, uh, Gentiles by will. And I'm not, I don't want to talk about on that right now because that's not what we're talking about. But I do love the fact that if you look at the lineage, because the lineage, I'm very much into Bible history, y'all. Oh, Bible, Bible history fills me up. Goodness. It makes me feel even closer to Jesus because I feel like, like I'm in the biblical times and I, I just feel uh, a different le level and a layer of the presence of God. So when you look at the biblical history of, of Jesus and who he descended from, you'll see that he came from the, uh, the tribe of Judah. And yes, Christ did say, and we've I've done a teaching on that already. You should go back and look at some of my other teachings. Uh, Jesus is not in position to serve anyone that is not uh, under him. Anyone that is not in his principality. So that's why we say we accept Jesus. We know that Jesus died for our sins. Okay? 
Now we're covered, we are clean, we are made whole, we are renewed, okay, in our faith and in our sowing and reaping uh, process, submitting to that process, submitting to sowing our minds and our hearts into the word of God, we're submitted to that, we receive the harvest from that, okay? Um, and Jesus is only position, I did that in my, if you want to go back to my principalities and powers video, because this is on your heart, go ahead, go scroll down in my periscope, watch my principalities and powers broadcast to see if the Holy Spirit left for us there. Okay, because um, there was a strong word imparted to us on that broadcast. And one of the things that I said uh, then, I think that might have been my 10th or 12th broadcast. I think this is number 28 um, that and I'd like to number them for you. You can go to YouTube if you want to see a clear sequence of all the broadcasts, too. Uh, and my website, LeahPink.com, I put a number on each broadcast so that you can say, OK, I really like number four. OK, I really need to see number 10 right now in my, in my spirit. I need to say number 13, okay? I like number 19, right? So go back, uh, just go ahead and check out the Principalities and Powers video and see how we talked about how Jesus is positioned to serve those who are up under him, up under Jesus. Jesus is not positioned to, to, to serve anyone that is not within, that is, that is not a follower of him. There is, and people get upset. I don't care. I don't care. People get upset. Yes, but not only Israel, but but understand too. Okay, I hope I wish some of you could see this because Holy Spirit, do I have permission to keep going on? Yes, and I'm seeing my angel numbers. Someone on Periscope is is uh, giving us a very interesting perspective. Okay, and uh, this interactivity is how our ministry is going to grow, honestly. And this is how it's going to grow, and this is how we're going to further edify one another. And Holy Spirit is going to work with us. As we are engaging each other and thinking about the word, I love that. So I appreciate your investment. Um, um, when you say just for Israel, Gentiles can become chosen ones through the grace of Jesus is what I, I just want to make sure that you um, think about. Okay, so it's uh, and that's the beauty of not of people who were not initially chosen by God. God's chosen people. As soon as you accept Jesus' salvation, salvation in Christ, then you can operate uh, with him, okay, and have his provision. And we can talk about that a little bit more, but it's not, it's not just uh, the chosen ones any longer with Jesus. Jesus came to save all, all who receive him, okay? And that's a word for everybody. Some of you all need to say that to someone this week. Jesus came to save you, whether or not you're a Jew or a Gentile, okay, uh, 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 this or that. If you believe in Jesus, he came to save you. He came to prosper. He came to work for you, okay, and that is scriptural. Okay, thank you, Father. That was beautiful. I love your presence on here. Thank you. Okay, it was the will of the Father for him to be here to deliver, okay, and to, to give that grace. It was, the will of the it was the will of the Father for Jesus to be here, okay? Excellent. Okay, Father God, Father God, in the name of Jesus, I'm ready. I'm, I'm, I'm ready again. I'm ready for you always. God says, do, do not close the broadcast, okay? Skeletons in closets. Skeletons in closets is what the Holy Spirit said. Okay? True, bro, it's true. Move on with the proxy. Um, skeletons in closets. Someone is concerned about skeletons in closets, okay? There I'm seeing a dress, like a dress of a, of a wife, okay? So uh, this woman could even be in the spirit. Maybe this woman has passed, okay? Because God is only showing me the bottom of her dress. God is not showing me, like, who she is, like a bug. So God is just wanting me to know. Skeletons in closets, wife, dress. Someone that's eating on her memory is what the whole, how the Holy Spirit said it. And I saw light, like, like pow. Okay, so that's going to hit home for someone. Someone's eating on her energy. But for some reason, I don't feel like you're with this person. Like, maybe it's an ex-wife or... Right? Maybe it's an ex-wife. 
because this, this is not a person that's like in the will of God for you. It's like you're eating on her energy. It's a skeleton in a in a closet. Like this woman represents a skeleton in a closet. And it's it's I don't know. Maybe it's maybe somebody else's wife. Like maybe, and I'm and I'm interpreting the words of the Holy Spirit here, and I'm and I'm making it relevant to different people who may come on the broadcast because one part may resonate with you, one part may resonate with another. The reason why God may call it a skeleton is because maybe it was your ex-wife and it's now a skeleton because it's, it's a, it might maybe like represent a dark part of your past. Uh, but maybe it could also be someone else's wife. Okay? And if you're a woman, perhaps you're, you know, and God's saying don't don't relate to women. Women just go ahead and watch, okay? I think this, this is particularly for our gentlemen who are on the broadcast, our men of God. God says he sees you watching her. Ooh, that's scary. God says he sees you watching her. Holy Spirit. And I see an eyeball and I see a lock and I see the, uh, the, the lock is open. Interesting. Eyes, like dark eyes. A lock on the inside of the eye, but the lock is open. What does that mean, Holy Spirit? I see a mohawk. I just have to mention that because that's what I saw when I asked Jesus what, what that meant. I saw, saw a mohawk. I see interesting earrings, like, like, you know, the, the open mold earrings type of thing. But it's like, so the Holy Spirit is telling me, like, watching this person brings out a radical side in you is what I'm hearing. Because, you know, when, when people have, and, and I just have to trust the Holy Spirit with whatever he tells me because it'll always lead to something else, even if it sounds strange. <laughs> you know, the people who have the the uh, the open lobes, the open ear lobes, and, like, the earrings on the inside of there? And they have like the fun hair, and you know, like they're just like there's there's kind of a, a right. That's not to say anybody's bad. He does that. There's a, a radical side to him. I love to see those hearts. God is saying that when you unlock your eyes to this person, and as you're watching, it releases a radical side to you. And that and it's a it's a a reminder that the initial thing was skeleton. Interesting. Now I'm seeing the impression of a heart. So there is love there. But, you know, if you were ever unclear about what this represents to the Holy Spirit, okay, if you had unclarity, I'm not, you know, I'm seeing whole lots of hearts. If uh, something is not clear about what the person represents, no, it is a skeleton. <laughs> so if you ever wanted to distinguish, like, is there a future for this? Like, can this become divine? Like, can this become the will of God? Like, no. The first thing the Holy Spirit said was it's, a, it's literally a skeleton. And before that, we were talking about rotten eggs in the past. Okay? Oh, those hearts look so beautiful. I see those. Release you to something better is what I heard. Don't fixate. Honor God. Treasure is among and before you. As you release yourself to the Holy Spirit. I'm seeing animal print for some reason. Okay? Animal print. What does that mean, Father? Thank you for those hearts on Periscope. I see you here. Animal print. I saw spots. I saw like spots like an animal print. Where is that? And, I, and God is saying it's not on fashion. I'll keep discerning. It's not like fashion animal print. Wild. Remember, remember, uh, wild was brought up. Wild. So God is saying, like, put put the wild stuff down. Like, lay it out, put it down. Why anything? Why? And you'll know what it is. Okay, if this is for you, you'll know what the wild represents. Lay it down. Because God has, now I'm seeing like a railroad, a road. God has a road for you. A road for you. Uh, and it's it's a lit path. 
because I see like light upon your path. And I'm not seeing who's on this train. I just know that it, the 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 way is paved for you, okay, to like go in a certain direction that is that is lit. And I will anoint you in your process, is what I hear. Just keep going. And now I'm seeing, oh, that was a beautiful vision. Now I'm seeing, follow Jesus 1983. I see you. You said, amen, amen. Amen. Yes, yes. And I saw a new share on our Facebook broadcast. Someone said, Amen. 504 Dre Star, Amen. Yes. Gentlemen, I'm I'm so glad that this is hitting home, okay? You know what, gentlemen? I saw a beautiful vision before I saw your amens. I saw um the sun behind a cloud. And then I saw the rays of the sun overwhelming the cloud, right? So you know how like when times are cloudy and it's just cloudy everywhere? It's like God, the son of God, the, God's son, which you can take that both ways, okay? The sun and the sun are shining through that cloudy situation as you, God is saying, as you focus your attention on Jesus. Oh, yes. As you focus your attention on Jesus, follow me, follow me, follow me. I'm seeing all kinds of new follows. I love that. Follow me, y'all. Oh, Jesus is so powerful. Okay? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for delivering our gentlemen from rotten paths, wrong focuses. Leaving wild things behind. They are skeletons, focusing on wrong women, focusing on women of the past. Okay? Fixating. Pow, 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 because God showed me pow, pow, like this is hitting home. Pow, 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 is what I see. Oh, you are liberated. You are liberated. There is better in Christ. As you empower yourself with the Holy Spirit, you will be empowered to find the right things in your path. Because again, your path is lit. And you can take that double way, because you know we like to say lit, but literally I saw above, like right here above, I saw a train track and I saw lights. You know, like the, not Christmas lights, but like ornate type of lights and the, like literally the path is lit by God, by the Holy Spirit. You're on path. So some of you just needed assurance, I believe, from the Holy Spirit that it wouldn't be over for you. And that's okay. Sometimes we just need to know that. That better is there. Because sometimes we focus on wrong people because we don't know what's next. God said your path is lit. It's lit. With him. Okay? And you're, you, man, light is shining through. That cloud is going to be overpowered by Jesus. Whatever that cloud is for you, it is overpowered by Jesus. Okay, so God says we can end the broadcast, okay? That hit my spirit. This has been a beautiful experience with you all. Again, go ahead and follow me. Follow me through the week, and I saw those hearts. All right, I am posting throughout the week. The woman of God is always active with the Holy Spirit. Yes, uh, the, uh, excuse me, 504 Dre Star says, can I ask for some prayer? Absolutely. Is there anything that we should focus our mind and heart on as we pray together and close the broadcast so that we can speak for you in our prayer? Thank you, Andre. Your name is Andre Nash. Welcome, Andre. Good to see you. Yes, we're listening, Andre. We'll wait. Just waiting here on Andre. Okay. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for our lit paths with the Holy Spirit as we activate the Holy Spirit, okay, in our life. Andre, if you want something specific prayed for, please go ahead and tell me that right now. Otherwise, we're going to go ahead. I need to know if I need to leave my situation with my wife. Wow, Andre, was that for you? Was that prophecy for you? 
Goodness gracious. Yes. And I believe someone else was on here that said amen during that during that prophecy from the Holy Spirit for you. Because uh, oftentimes oh, the Holy Spirit talks to the women on the broadcast, but men have received. But this word, Jesus said, tell the women to just hold on and listen. He had a word for you men. So, yes, I hope so. No, I, no I'm not going to say was the word for you. The word was for you. The word was for you. Because when the Holy Spirit speaks and it hits home and it's a confirmation, that is what we remember. We were talking about a match. That's a match. Okay? So the Holy Spirit is speaking directly for you. I am going to say no. I'm going to say no. Let me just uh, discern the voice of the Holy Spirit for your particular situation. So just to fill you all in on Facebook, um, Andre... Um, Nash is asking whether or not he should like stay with his ex-wife. Remember, and, the, and I would, I like, I don't know, Andre. We, I like, I don't even. I think you just started following me or something like that. I've never, I don't even know if I've seen that username. But you made yourself so present. I did not know that we were gonna have a situation like that on the line. Okay, so for the Holy Spirit to just bring that up, and it be someone who's with us and who's been sustaining His presence with us is a demonstration of the power of God. A demonstration of the power of God. And I just have to pause and say that because God has been quickening me to uh, communicate when his power is being demonstrated, okay? That is a pure demonstration of the prophetic power of God upon your woman of God from the Holy Spirit, okay? Holy Spirit, help me, help us, help us, help us. Help me, help me give Andre the right word. The Holy Spirit immediately says, yes, your spirit is needing to leave. And there is, I don't know if she still has jewelry. I don't know if you all are connected because she has, because the Holy Spirit gave me the impression that she still has some jewelry that maybe you gave her. Is, is this true? Like withholding jewelry or withholding something precious or like, Somehow, something she has is still attached to you. It came across as jewelry, though. Okay? But it could be something else that she's holding on to. Or has in her possession. Okay? But the Holy Spirit is saying that, yes, you are in the right to move forward yes you are in the right to move forward and whatever because i keep god is keep quickening me to stay here I, you haven't confirmed yet but i'm going to keep going i'm going to say she has something i don't know if it's a child because it came across as jewelry but can it, it could be anything precious that represents something precious to you she's holding on to this onto this marriage and won't let it go while i would like a prophetic word like this king cyrus okay king Okay, King. Okay, as soon as, as soon as the Holy Spirit is done talking to Andre, so you can uh, let me know um, what it is, and then again we'll we'll pray. Um, she's holding on to the marriage, so we'll, it's something precious. Okay, yes, marriage is precious, but there's something that the Holy Spirit just wants to bring attention to, and maybe I don't know if you want to say it out loud, but like there's a connection, there's like something in her possession, and I don't. Jewelry, precious children, but there's there's a link there. So, okay, God, what does he need to do then? Holy Spirit, prophetic, prophetic anointing, prophetic anointing, prophetic anointing. Leave this woman alone. I'm seeing at least two or three other men. Oh, she's holding above my head all the things she's done. Okay, so she, that's what it is. It's precious and valuable because she's saying she's done things for you and it's probably financial, okay? Maybe she's giving you jewelry or maybe, like I told you there was something like an exchange. Yeah, she's giving you jewelry. Okay, so I mistaken, because I, I heard the Holy Spirit say there's a link possession jewelry she's in possession of something but it was her possessions she imparted it to you and you're in possession of things okay because yeah materialistic blessings is what the holy spirit is saying 
there's a link there between you two somehow. Okay. Thank you for confirming that. Uh, Cause the Holy spirit loves confirmation. I have to say that Holy spirit made it evident to me on the last broadcast. Cause there was some deep things going on. Oh, uh, Crystal said it was for multiple folks. Yes. Um, the Holy spirit, uh, got lots of confirmations last time. And, uh, he told me that he likes the, the when people confirm what he's saying is true because it, it gives glory. It's a it's a glory transference. It gives him it exalts God above ourselves and it shows the demonstration of the power of God. That's the cloud. God is saying that's the cloud. Anything, remember when remember when God showed us the cloud before we start talking about this and the and the light shining forth through the cloud? God said that is the cloud. This whatever is being held over your head, you know, cloud, you said she's holding something this over your head, these possessions, these things that she's imparted. That God is saying that's the cloud above your head. What does he do, Holy Spirit, about these possessions? That she's imparted. I heard don't let go. <laughs> so like if they were gifts. I, I really heard the Holy Spirit say don't let go. Of, of whatever you know. Because like you might be actually needing something. To, to get you forth in your journey. I uh, I don't know. It could be a vehicle. It could be anything that was imparted. But it actually could be something that you desire or want. Holy Spirit is saying, like, don't let go of the stuff. You know, um, she can get a court order or whatever, but I don't think that you are obligated to give gifts back, like if they were gifts. I don't think you should feel shame. The Holy Spirit is not giving me a feeling of shame at all about what you've been imparted. Um, a gift is a gift. And you shouldn't feel, oh, you did, oh, you gave it back already. Okay. You gave all the stuff back. Okay. But yeah, yeah, no, God, God didn't tell me that you needed to. I said, <laughs> but that's good that you did because you don't, you don't want, but that's interesting. Glory to God that we were able to know that you did give the things back. See, that's another testament to God. Okay. Cause he knows that there are things involved. No, I, I'm not in a, I, God has all this whole time, Andre. God has not given me one impression that you need to stay in this relationship with this woman. And the thing is, I don't even sense that she's a bad woman, but this is what I wanted to tell you. I did sense two or three other men in her atmosphere, in her sphere close to her, okay? And I'm sorry to say that if you didn't know, but uh, I did because I, I was meditating, I was meditating, thinking on what you said and, and discerning the Holy Spirit. And I sensed two and then three, but not more than three. Other men specifically, not women. And that is a factor to the Holy Spirit because, and this is just me, I'm not talking. Now, this is just me. He said, he said thank you, ma'am. This is just me. And I don't know if you're aware of any of, any of the other ones, any of the other gentlemen, but, um, If if her heart is in the atmosphere, remember we're talking about heart and atmosphere, okay, of other men, other gentlemen, these could just be people that are interested in her or courting her that she's considering, okay? But if her heart is there, no, Holy Spirit is saying her heart is there, okay, then it's not conducive for you, even though there could be a little fixation there, like you could be unlocking your eyes to, to view her, okay? Workplace men, workplace men, wow, wow, wow. Cause I, cause yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Cause I saw two and then three, so there was like a, a multiplication of them, like close by. And that would make sense because the reason why they're so close is because there's a proximity with work. Wow. That makes real good sense because I sense her and then two, three, very, very close. 
And yeah, she doesn't come across as like a woman that's like raunchy or anything. It's just she's like she like men are close, and her heart's considering them. Okay, one or more. Because I, I saw two and then three. I don't know why God separated them like that, two, and then a third, but that's how it came across. Okay, and you're saying here there's workplace. God, kept, God said again, don't let go of your things. So I don't know if you still have things that you haven't let go of yet, but take that how you want. But I, I heard it again. Don't let go of your things. But the person, yes. Because she's just not interested in you the way that she needs to in order to be the woman of God that she needs to be in your life, right? And I'm not sure where that breakdown happened, but God says he got better for you. You got your, your road is lit. Your road is lit, okay? Andres, thank you so much. I'm so glad we were able to uh, work with the Holy Spirit and get you a prophetic word uh, for your particular situation, Okay. Yes, yeah, she said, I believe so too, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, following Jesus 1983, can you pray for me for open doors financially? Randy, yes, Randy. Yes, Dre, yes. We will pray for financial doors to be open uh, for you. Okay? Um, the Holy Spirit had gave me something on, on my mind. I just want to make sure I didn't, don't lose that real quick. Oh, oh, the Holy Spirit wanted me to tell you that more and more people have been inboxing me on Facebook in particular. Um, I, I got uh, two women this week who contacted me about relationships. It was like the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, this, this is the key point. He's concerned about your relationships. I would never um, disclose anyone's name or any circumstance. Um, Really, I, I just don't do that unless, like, you publicly say it and broadcast it because that's a testament to God and show you share your testimony and the confirmation of the prophetic word. That's how we can uh, get that to be more transparent. But God has been moving today. Someone at about two thirty emailed me and was talking about a uh, situation with a husband and and a house and, and her beliefs. And I said, Jesus. I immediately, as soon as I saw it, I went to my Bible. I said, Jesus, what do I say to her? And He gave me a scripture. And it was exactly what she was going through and exactly what she needed to, to know, okay? And so um, it was something about uh, some specific details about the home that she wasn't comfortable with. And if I share too much, I will probably release who she is, and I don't want to do that. But it was something she was uncomfortable with, but Jesus handled it. She was satisfied with the prophetic word that came to her. So I'm inviting you. Send me prayer requests. I have a website. We have a website. Me, Father God. Jesus Christ, Holy Spirit, we, we have a website for you to take advantage of. So we're inviting you to send us your prayer request on the website. It's where it says contact so. Um, even as you're sowing your seed, you can say, hey, this is the seed, this is the name of the seed, and then this is my follow-up um, to, to give you more information or to discuss more about this, okay? So, yes, that's just to let you all know there's a resource, there's a tool there for you to stay engaged with the Holy Spirit, okay? Whew. Yes, Jesus. Okay. Someone else did ask for a prayer. I don't know if he's still here. Let me scroll up on the comments. Okay. Okay. King Cyrus. Are you still here? King Cyrus 78. And following Jesus 19, I think 78. I'm about to pray for your financial your financials. Okay. All right. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Jesus, glory, glory, holy, holy are you, Lord. Holy, holy are you, Lord. As a ministry, as a church, as a group of believers who are in a straight line below you, Jesus, a straight line following you, Jesus, to heaven as we are on earth, as my presence is in heaven with you. Father God, we ask you to line up our hearts with everything you desire for us according to your will. Give us the power to straighten up our minds, to straighten up our hearts, to 
get us in a position where we desire no thing that is outside of your will. Give us an eye to discern evil. Evil thoughts, evil desires, evil pleasures. Give us an appetite on only that which is good. Because there is a satanic appetite and there is a divine appetite. Father God, we ask for divine appetite. Divine appetite in the name of Jesus. Father God, we know that you are the best source of food for our womb. And we desire that only your word is seeded and rooted in us. And we anticipate our harvest of fruit, pleasure, prosperity. We know that you are a God that is concerned with every area of our life. If you can count the hair on our head, then we know that you can discern what is going on in every aspect and dimension of our heart and mind, Jesus. We trust you in this process. We know that you have bountiful blessings for us. We know that the enemy can only appetite us with that which is a knockoff to your system. You have the real system of blessings, Jesus. It is you who enriches our life, Jesus. The enemy can't offer us anything that comes close to the end feeling that you have given us and that you continue to give us, Father. Some new believers are on here. They have only felt a seed of what your infilling feels like. You are rich soil. And thank you for blessing me with, with rich soil in this ministry to serve your people, Jesus. We receive the anointing. Say it with me. We receive the anointing. We receive the anointing. We receive the anointing. I am at the next level in my relationship with Jesus and the Holy Spirit and the Father. As a result, the power of God and the Holy Spirit is here at a higher level in the name of Jesus. Work harvests, financial deliverance is, is what's needed. Guys, you all need to go to the website and sow. Many of you are needing a job and you need a harvest just like I did in 2014. I needed my next job. I don't care how much it is that you start sowing for as you begin the sowing and reaping process. Because some of you are new, you just want to maybe do. But people start off sowing in my ministry $5 and they've seen miracles because they started the process. And then they come back and they, they sow more. Because the Bible does say we sow we reap what we sow. So if you sow small, you reap small. You sow big, you reap big. I have everything is secure. Go to PayPal and Cash App. You can do it or you can text it on your phone. But if you want financial deliverance, guys, it's going to take more than prayer. It's going to take more than prayer. It needs your seed. You have to sow. Some of you all should be on my website right now looking at my website and the con our website in the contact zone section. That's where you should be in addition to here on a different device, okay? As soon as this broadcast is over, you all need to go. If you need deliverance, I may not have even said what you need deliverance from, but you still need to go sow a seed for the deliverance because my prayer is not going to get you the deliverance that you need. It's going to take my prayer with the Holy Spirit and your seed together to cause the, the breakthrough the and the release of the power to happen. That's just the divine law. Like, if I could just say, I, I can just pray for you and everything is going to be okay, I would be praying my butt off all day. But I can't, I can't just pray and make that happen. I have to pray and you have to sow. And I'll tell you that every single time because I know the process. It's worked for me in every area. I, like I told you all, career, health, connections, everything. It was all about my seed. After... I submitted my life to Jesus. It was submission to Jesus, submission to my man of God, release of my seed. There we go. Okay? And not just my man of God, like everywhere I sow, because I've sold plenty of places, okay? But my man of God has been very significant in that process. That is the sequence to change. That is the sequence to change and transformation. Okay? I love you all, and I want to see you blessed. We all going to be blessed to the next level. We are already blessed. 
But our anoint as our anointing increases and as your seed happens and it, it gets rooted in the ground, okay? Increase happens. It's inevitable because we're operating in divine divine law. It is about the seed. Let me tell you. Okay, I know this from experience. Agape win. And if you think it ain't about the seed, you ain't operating in the divine law of God. The seed is Jesus. Go in Genesis chapter 3. Genesis chapter 3 is the seed. Okay? God is saying, we don't even need to go ahead and reteach that to somebody who wasn't here. <laughs> you all get it. The, one, the ones that God is talking to are here and you get it. Start off with your seed. Text it in. Cash app. Or get it in through PayPal. Okay? Which you can also use on your phone, your app. Everything can be done on your phone. Or you can mail it to my PO box. And I will pray over your seed. And send me your prayer. As you sow your seed, send me your prayer request. And I will continue to pray over your seed. It's all on there. Yes. All right. Deliverance, Jesus. Okay. I don't want to be disobedient. God told me to end the broadcast. I love you all. I will see you. I will see you um, on Wednesday. All right. And on next Sunday, so long as it is the will of the Father, which I, I yes, yes, it is the will of the Father. But I always have to preface that because I follow Jesus and Jesus only, the Holy Spirit. Okay? And, and the instructions that I get for my life. Have a prosperous week. Come back to this word. I want to see your faces. Okay? I want to see your faces. And I want to love on you as I post through the week with the Holy Spirit. Okay? Yes, G, following Jesus 1983. Did you receive that prayer? I believe you received that prayer. Okay. We love you. Now bless. Okay. Hold on. Let me get this. I always try to do this right. Yes, I receive. Okay. Make sure. Okay. There we go. Bye, guys. Jesus, you be with you. Higher, higher. Jesus, you be with you. Higher, Notice he said good and faithful. Some people are good, but they're not faithful, so they become evil. Mm -hmm. He said that good and faithful. Yes. Meaning that you stayed in the realm that I revealed to you. You stayed in the instruction that I gave to you. You stayed in the character that I birthed in you. You stayed in the revelation that I showed to you. You stayed in the seed principle. You sold your Lord. Said I, verse 23, I, I make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. So say it, watch it. The word of the Bible says, Those that sow in tears shall weep in joy. Because the joy is connected to God getting that money to you. 
Thank you. 